The fine birdie here on the fourth hole goes back to one under par. He's tied for the lead with Boris. Trevino's bogey dropped him two strokes behind the leaders. The piñata is a hollow receptacle fashioned in the shape of an animal or bird, usually of paper mache and clay, gaily decorated on the outside and filled to overflowing on the inside with fruit, candy, and other gifts. No children's party in Mexico is complete without one. So what is a piñata doing in the yard of an industrial plant? Very simple. You see, several years ago, Shell Mexico built this new factory on the outskirts of Mexico City to manufacture no pest strips, those pieces of yellow plastic into which Vapona has been incorporated. When used as the label directs, Shell's no pest strips very effectively get rid of flies, mosquitoes, and other flying insects that you really don't want around the house. Well, Mexicans don't want them either. Now, when the first anniversary of the opening of the plant rolled around, Shell wanted to celebrate. Someone suggested a piñata party for the kids of the neighborhood. And the party was so successful that now, every year, Shell closes up the no pest business for an afternoon and has a party. This year, you're invited. But don't get in the kid's way, unless you like living dangerously. <laughs> Having a piñata party might seem like a strange thing for Shell to be doing, but it's a part of Shell's own private good neighbor policy. Tomorrow, it will be business as usual for Shell here in Mexico City. But for one afternoon, the men who work at this one small plant of a group of companies whose operations are worldwide have given visible expression to a basic philosophy of those companies that Shell people should be good citizens of each community where they live and work. This is the symbol of that philosophy, the worldwide symbol of Shell's constant search for new products, new ideas, new ways to serve you better. On the par four, 391 yard fifth hole, all three players got their pars. Frank Beard and Julius Boris remain tied for the lead at one under par. Lee Trevino, one over. The sixth hole, a par four of 405 yards, is a very narrow driving hole. Beard and Boris were right down the center of the fairway. Beard out about 250 yards, and Boris out about 245. But Trevino, bothered by a bad knee, duck hooked his drive, which landed in the trees on the left, about 150 yards from the tee. Lee's shot was timed by the trees, and he also had to avoid catching the water hazard which crosses the fairway in front of the green. So Lee punched a seven iron, finishing up just short of the water. Julius Boris, about 245 yards down the center of the fairway, is playing his second shot with a nine iron. Julius lost it high into the air, and uh, it's going uh, right at the flag. It's going to be short again. Julius has been short about uh, five times the first six holes here. Here's Frank Beard with his second shot. He's standing just slightly above the ball. He's going to play uh, about a half nine iron. He starts it out toward the right side of the flag. It's going to carry just past the pin. Hits the soft green, spins back, and uh, Frank has a nice chance here for a birdie. Lee Trevino's third shot. He had to chip out short of the creek, and his half wedge shot uh, carried just about a pin high, all three players on the green, Boris and Beard in two, and uh, Lee Trevino in three. After Beard and Boris two putted for their pars, Trevino needed this 10-footer to save his. That's a good-looking stroke there. Yeah. Oh, boy, well, that might, have, uh, that might have made him feel a little better there because uh, he jammed that one in. That was a fine comeback. 
And after six holes of play, Frank Beard and Julius Forrest remained at work.